In collaboration with BrainMind, let's do a brief overview about brain health. There's no doubt you've heard about lifespan or longevity, how long a person lives. And you may have heard about health span, meaning how well a person lives into their older years, the quality of their life. But have you heard about brain span? Have you heard about cognitive decline and the impact that it has on someone's quality of life? Well, brain span and brain health is the new frontier when it comes to living longer and living better. Brain health includes a variety of different aspects. Cognitive health, memory function that works well throughout the lifespan. Higher order processing, processing speed, a person's attention, a person's ability to learn information. Cognitive health, in many ways, is brain health. The goal of this series is to review all of the different evidence-based, yet safe ways that we can not just live longer, but live better, and live better through optimal cognitive health. There's no better way to live than with a healthy brain. So, Brain Health 101. Different parts of the brain have different functions. The front part of the brain is responsible for attention, for higher order processing, something called executive function. The side part of the brain are responsible for a variety of things, from visual spatial orientations, processing speed, attention, and other aspects of, of everyday life. The back part of the brain is where vision is processed, and the temporal part of the brain deep down in here, the temporal lobes, house the memory centers, specifically the hippocampus, where short-term memories ideally become long-term memories. At any point along the way in cognitive processing, something can go wrong to cause a cognitive glitch or a cognitive change. Let's talk about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of neurodegenerative dementia. Alzheimer's occurs across a variety of stages. Most people are unaware that Alzheimer's disease begins in the brain 20 to 30 years before the first symptom of memory loss begins. That leaves ample time and a critical window to intervene in order to protect brain health and reduce our risk for developing Alzheimer's disease dementia. Let's talk about some definitions. There are different stages of Alzheimer's disease. I use the term stage zero when there is no Alzheimer's disease starting in the brain and the person has normal memory and cognitive function. Stage zero is a way to think about primary prevention of Alzheimer's disease, the disease starting in the brain. When the disease has already begun in the brain, but someone has no symptoms whatsoever, that is actually called stage one, preclinical or pre-symptomatic Alzheimer's disease, where there are no detectable signs of cognitive impairment but you can do a brain scan or a blood test or a spinal fluid test to detect that Alzheimer's has begun silently in the brain. Stage two Alzheimer's disease is called mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's. Mild cognitive impairment or MCI is a stage where someone is just starting to have some cognitive glitches. They may or may not be sure, it could be normal for age, it could be something bad or pathologic. That is a precursor sign because Mild cognitive impairment can progress in time to stage three, Alzheimer's disease dementia. The definition of Alzheimer's disease dementia is when the disease has progressed so far in the brain that the person can no longer take care of themselves. Once someone goes to Alzheimer's disease dementia, there are three phases of that stage, mild, moderate, and severe. So a different way to look at Alzheimer's disease prevention can look at stage one, stage two, and stage three in different formats. As we talked about, stage zero is primary prevention, but stage one could also be talked about as secondary prevention, meaning the disease has started, but we want to prevent the disease from progressing to mild cognitive impairment all the way through dementia. The other term would be tertiary prevention, meaning the person has symptoms, but we want to keep those symptoms where they're at, stop the disease in its tracks, and again, prevent that person from developing dementia. So to truly understand brain health, we have to understand pathological aging. Pathological cognitive aging includes neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's dementia and other dementias. We also have to understand non-pathological aging, which is cognitive changes that occur normally or within an expected degree due to the aging process. So understanding brain health includes understanding the different parts of the brain, how they work, 
how they contribute to different cognitive domains, and then which medical conditions, lifestyle changes, and environmental changes a person can take on in order to protect the various parts of their brain and try to protect against spreading of Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative disease pathology.